Hello there, this is Russ Bucher from Control My Nikon. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can capture a focus stack using Control My Nikon. I'm currently connected to a D800, and I'm just going to turn on Live View. And our subject for a focus stack is this mineral. I have a Nikon 105mm macro lens on. The size of this rock is a little bit bigger than a quarter. I have no idea what this is. It's real shiny. I bought it in a gem shop. When we preview this in the image browser, we can see that only some parts of it are in focus. I'm currently at f8, which is pretty well the sharpest setting for this lens. And when I click on here to autofocus, I can see the part in the foreground and backgrounds out of focus. If I try to focus on the near part, then everything else is out of focus and so on. So there's really just too much depth of field needed here for this particular aperture. So what we can do is take a series of images at varying focus levels. Now you can explore this image a little bit by using the focus adjustment keys. So if I press this one here, it changes the focus, and this one even further away. These are the course adjustments. And if I use this one here, it moves a much smaller amount, and you can change how much these buttons move the focus in the layers menu. And you just go down to focus step, and I'll change this to about 50. And now it moves it a bit more. So really, this is what a focus stack is going to be like. We're going to start at a point that is closest to us, and then step backwards. Take an image, step backwards. Take an image, step backwards. And we'll keep on going. Each one of these is a slice. So the amount of slices we need to have full focus coverage from front to back needs to be known. And it's very easy to count them. So I'll focus at the beginning. And just to be safe, I'll actually focus a little closer than the beginning. And now I'll start stepping back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And now look at the edges here. You want to make sure that this entire thing is out of focus. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31. This is still in focus. 32, 33, 34, 35. So 35 slices should do it if we start just a little bit in front of the nearest point. Now the step that we use there was 50. So you want to make sure that it's stepping enough distance between each slice. So if I was to advance the focus by one, you can see here, kind of in a plane, what is in focus. And to me, it looks like 50 would be okay. If I change this to 100, then every time we change a step, it would go too far. And we would have gaps of detail that the post-processing application will need to create the composite focus stacked image. Okay, so let's go to the focus stacking workflow. Now this workflow also allows you to maneuver around the image a bit. And here is the step size, and you have your own set of buttons here. These ones use the settings found on the Layers tab. These ones use a setting here for the step. So this is a very small adjustment, one-tenth of the step. This is an adjustment of the step, so we're stepping by 50 here, and this is times 10. So just a quick way to move around. Now you also have the focus nudger here, and when you move this, it'll move the focus very finely. But generally, if you want to change a focus, you normally just use these buttons here, and perhaps double-clicking for an autofocus. So we had determined that a step of 50 
and 35 slices are what's needed for this particular object. Now we can also set the delay in between each shot and you might use this delay to recharge any strobe lights that you might have and we can also tell it to export to Zarene Stacker. We'll have a separate video on doing exports to Zarene Stacker. Zarene Stacker is an excellent application for focus stacking. It'll take these images that we capture and compile them into a composite image. And we can also use a stack shot and a stack shot uses a rail that physically moves your camera body and lens instead of us needing to change the focus in your lens. Now most modern Nikon lenses can allow for changes of focus while tethered like we do here, but some lenses such as third party lenses may not work. Sigmas and Tamrons, you know, most of them will work. They don't necessarily completely emulate the Nikon CPU uh, in the lens and so they may not allow focus remotely. So once we set this up and before we had it set up here at the beginning and then we came a little bit closer so it was out of focus. We said 35 steps is what we need. So you can hit the preview button here and that's just going to step through the slices but without capturing the images. We'll use this to double check that we have enough depth of field coverage. And this area back here is the last area that was in focus before. You can see it's going nicely out of focus, 35. Yeah, this looks good. So then it'll come back to the starting point. The accuracy of it coming back to the starting point really depends on the lens and body. Some lenses are better than others. Every time we command the focus motor to move the focus, there can be a little bit of play in that or a little hysteresis, and that causes a loss of accuracy. So if we tell it to go 35 times 50 units in one direction, and then when it's done, go 35 times 50 units back in the opposite direction, it will not necessarily wind up in the same location. It'll likely be close, but you may have to just fine tune it with these buttons here. So first part in focus, come back a little bit. That looks like a good starting point. So now we need to capture it. And when we capture it, we will set it to subfolders so it'll have its own subfolder and its own image counter. If you don't set this to subfolders then it'll just be under a focus stack subfolder um, but it'll use the main counter that we define here. So let's give it a try. And now as these are coming in you could see them on this viewer here. You can also go to the browser and see them. But the advantage of having this viewer here is that you could have stayed in live view and viewed it. Once you leave live view, however, for the browser, then you're locked into live view until the stack is complete. So let's take a look at what we have so far. You can just click here in the thumb strip and move the mouse wheel. And you can see how it's changing. Well, good progress so far. And you can also do the same here. Image number 13. You can hit cancel at any time to stop the preview or capture process. And you can move these around to resize it. And you might want a bit more information here. Might want a histogram. 
Give the exposure information. And you can widen this as well so you can see more. This is as wide as it goes. Number 33, almost done. And it's just starting to go out of focus in the back. Okay, so it finished at 34, so because it started at zero, that was 35 images. You could see how it was put in the stack folder, and that stack underscore year, month, day, underscore hour, minute, second. So that's when the stack started. And it started at file number zero. So if I use my mouse wheel or the arrow key on the keyboard, you can cycle through it. And I'm just going to hide this for a moment. And I'll hide this as well. So it looks like we have pretty good coverage. It ends completely out of focus. It started completely out of focus. You can use the arrow keys on the keyboard to navigate here as well, back and forth. And you can use home to go to the first and to go to the last. So the first one was out of focus and the last one is out of focus. Good coverage, I think. You can also do the same here. So you can move your mouse wheel and use the keyboard keys to navigate as well. Now the advantage of having this here is that you can still bring up the browser and view a different folder if you like. You might view a previous stack. Or you can bring up live view and review your images even though you have live view up. So let's take a closer look at these images. If we go to the image browser here and look at the stack, you can pick any image and press the F key, which is uh, set up under keyboard shortcuts, and uh, to see it full screen. And then you can use the arrow keys to cycle through the different images. You can move that to a different monitor if you like. I'll press F again. But you can also click over here on your mini browser and use the W key to bring that up full screen. And I'll press W again to close it. So F for the main image browser full screen, W for the workflow full screen. But let's take a look at some other things that we can do here. If you right click, you can show this image in the browser. So it shows it here. You can edit an external editor so it will launch whatever application you have associated with this file extension of JPEG. And you can have captured this as well in any of these image formats, including RAW plus JPEG. You can toggle it full screen, which is the same as pressing the W key. You can flag a particular image. It really doesn't do anything other than put this red line here, so maybe you might flag a keeper or one that you later want to delete. If you have sync set, that means that as new images are captured, they'll be immediately displayed. You can have browser sync, so whatever you are seeing here, it'll also show on the main browser. You can set it to high quality, and all that does is it reprocesses the histogram and the preview image in higher definition takes more CPU time, so normally we leave it on low quality when we're capturing. It has no effect on the final actual large captured image. Now you can delete an image here as well, or you can press the delete key on the keyboard. If you click on browse, you can flip to a different folder. 
You can refresh it, which reloads these from the database. The images are kept in a folder, but the thumbnails and all this other information like the histogram are kept in the database. You can export it to Zareen Stacker from here. And you can also configure it. So you can add or remove the types of information you have here in the thumb strip. And you just put whatever information you prefer here to make your workflow go easier. When you export to Zareen Stacker, you can tell it to auto export and at the end of the capture session, it'll automatically send it to Zareen or after the fact, you can send it to Zareen. So you can look at this and say, yeah, okay, this one was fine. Let's send it to Zareen Stacker and see what happens. Now, before you send it to Zareen Stacker, you need to go to the Tools menu, Preferences, and go to the Zareen Stacker Path. So this is where it's installed. Close, right click, and export. And we'll have a separate video tutorial on using Zareen Stacker. So you can see that it found the images. And what we can do for a quick stack is go to Stack, Align, and Stack All PMAX. And we'll just let that process. And what it does is it looks at each image and finds the areas of highest contrast and brings that out into a composite image. We'll just let that run. Here's what it has so far. And you'll see this image becomes progressively more and more in focus. And now you can see it's up to image number seven and it's starting to build the detail at the front of the image. So you can see the difference. If I was to look at any one of the intermediate images here, say image number 15, where we have such a shallow depth of field, Serene Stacker has assembled the detail from these images into a much more detailed final image. I'm just going to save this image. And I'll save it as a JPEG. If I look back here, here's our finished image. Explore it with the image magnifier. And as you can see, it did a really nice job, even along these edges here. So it looks like we had enough depth of field coverage with all the different slices that we had. So be sure to check out our other tutorials on Zareen Stacker and also using the stack shot for doing a focus stack session. Happy tethering!